Math 98. We're going to look at section 9.7. This is higher roots. So we're used to square roots, right? Where we say, what's the square root of 25? And what this is asking is, what's the, the second root of 25, right? It's saying, like, what to the second power would give us 25? That's our answer. So we don't write it, but really there's a little 2 here telling us that it's the second root. So we can go for higher roots. What if I wanted to know, uh, for instance, like what to the third power is 8? And we, kn we know the answer is 2. So what to the third power is 8? If I'm going to ask that question, I still use that radical sign, but I put a 3 here. That's called an index, the, the root index. So now this is talking about cubing. What to the third power would give me 8? Or I could say like... Uh, what to the what to the fourth power what to the fourth power would uh give i don't know 81 something like that i know i wrote 181 i wrote to, I meant to write 81 so this is asking what to the fourth power would give me 81 so these root indexes uh, a couple things i can say about them Basically, like the, the nth root of something, this is asking a question. It's asking what to the nth power is equal to x. So let's take a look at this one. The fourth root of 81, right? This is asking what to the fourth power would give us 81. And you might see right off the bat that it's 3. If you don't see it, um, you can do a little bit of guess and checking, right? You can be like something to the fourth power. Let's see, 2 to the fourth power. You can use that parrot caret for power, right? That's 16. Uh, 3 to the fourth power is 81. That's my answer. So some of these you know. Some of these you'll have to hunt for a little bit. Like what to the fifth power is 243? Well, I don't know. Let's try 3. 3 to the fifth. 243, and I guess 3 because it ended in a 3, so I knew it was going to be an, an odd number. Now how about this? What to the third power would give me negative 8? And I know that if it was just an 8, this would be a 2, but this is kind of weird. With the third power, I can, I can go negative 2, right? Like I can actually take the, the third root of a negative number because if you think about taking negative 2 to the third power, it's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. These two make a positive, positive 4, but positive 4 times negative 2 gives me a negative 8. But if I ask what to the fourth power is negative 16, I have four things multiplied together, and if they're all negative, those would make a positive, those would make a positive, right, whatever my number is. So it's not going to, this isn't going to work. So no solution to that, no real solution at least. So that gives me a little thing to think about. Um, if I have this n, nth root of x, um, if even um, x has to be positive, if n is odd, x can be anything. Because an odd number of multiplications, you can get a negative number. So let's keep playing around with these. So we know that the, the square root of y squared, we know it undoes itself. And we know that this will only spit out positive values. So technically what I should say here is that this is the absolute value of y, right? It's only a positive y. If y is negative 5, square root of negative 5 squared, negative 5 squared is 25, it spits out 5. See how it spits out the, the positive version of it. So on this one, I'm going to say it's got to be that. Now this next one, the fifth root of p to the fifth. Remember what the fifth root is asking. It's saying what to the fifth power would give me p to the fifth? Well, it's p, right? p to the fifth is p to the fifth. Fifth root and fifth power undo each other. Just here, seventh root and seventh power, this is odd, so they undo each other. It gives me a negative m. Sixth root of a negative 
sixth power, this one's going to be no solution. Because I'm not going to be able to go the sixth root of a negative. So let's keep thinking about some more. The third root of y to the 18th. So what we're trying to figure out here is what to the third power would give me y to the 18th. Well, it's going to be y something, right? And I know when I have a power to a power, I, I multiply. So I'm looking for what can I multiply here by 3 to get to 18. So it must be 6. So this is y to the 6th. Similarly with this one, this is asking what to the 4th power would give me x to the 8th. Well, the base is x, so I'm going to throw an x in here. Something times 4 would give me 8, too, so this must be x squared. Hopefully you're starting to see some good relationships here, and you can see that this one will be m to the 3rd. So both of these, just like, uh, you know, when we've broken them up, square root of a times b is square root of a times square root of b, that works for any root index. So we could say any root. So uh, the cube root of 27, that's 3. And the cube root of x to the 27th, right, what to the third gives us x to the 27th? It's got to be 9 because 9 times 3 is 27. Similarly here, fourth root of 81 is 3. Fourth root of q to the 24th, uh, it would be 6. 6 times 4 is 28. q to the 6th. Now we can simplify. Um, we can simplify some of these. Remember when we had like the square root of x cubed? We were like, well, I could take one x out of here. I could rewrite this as square root of x squared times the square root of x. Because square root of x squared, I know what it is. I'm taking out as many squares as I can. We can do the same sort of thinking with higher roots. For example, with this one with cubed, we want to take out as many cubes as we can. So let's write this as the third root of x cubed times the third root of x. Well, this is just x, right? Undoes itself. So this would be x cube root of x. If we had this, same sort of thinking, we could take four of these out, leaving us three of them. This is just an x, and this is a fourth root of x cubed. You know, I, I'm going to throw another one in here. If I had like the fifth root of x, let's say to the um, 13th. Well, I want fives, right? So I'm going to take out an x to the 10th. And let's see, the fifth root of x to the 10th is x squared, because 5 times 2 is 10. And then I'm left with this fifth root of x cubed. So we get to think about this with number as well. Um, 3 cubing, well, 2, like 8, right? 8 is a, is a cube. So I could say third root of 8 times the third root of 2, because these multiply to 16. Uh, third root of 8 is 2, so this would be 2, third root of 2. Similarly with this one, um, 16 is 2 to the 4th. So uh, let's see, how many times does 16 go into 64? Four times. So I could write this as this times 16, 4. So this would be a 2, and then the fourth root of 4. Yeah, and so you can just keep breaking them up like this as well. If we wanted to do like a little more complicated of a problem like this, we might say uh, the third root of 54, p to the 10th. We can do it for both parts, right? So if I think about third roots, uh, 27, 3 to the 27th. Like a way to think about this number is, is take this 54 and just think about what goes into it. And I know that 3 goes into it. I know that 9 goes into it, right? So I could say like 54 divided by 9. That's 9 times 6. 9 times 6. 
this is 3 times 3, this is 3 times 2. I can see I have a cube in there. I have a 3 cubed in there. Right? So you could say this is the same as the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. And then let's take a 9 out of this. Cube root of p to the 9th. That was supposed to be a p. Cube root of p. And you see what's left. Cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of p to the 9th is p to the 3rd because 3 times 3 is 9. And then I still have a 2p left in there. All right. Hey, dig into these. Post any questions in the forum or message me with them.